Hey, how's it going? I'm Corey Schaefer and I'm sitting with Mindless Self-Indulgence. Spent the last half an hour or so talking about hacking. Do you want to play a game? There was a guy named Storm Shadow who shut down all the um, electricity in a, in a town in Ohio. He went nuts and thought he was actually in the Matrix. And now we've got to get down to the boring stuff. Okay, so first off, uh, I've been a fan for a long time, so I've been, I've been following you guys for a long time. And you guys have been consistently dogged with uh, the title, The Next Big Thing. But you guys have two number ones on Billboard now. That doesn't sound like something coming from The Next Big Thing. Are you the current big thing now? I think we're the underdog and probably one of the biggest unknown things, you know, that isn't on your major radio or on your MTV. And I think that the landscape changed mm -hmm. dramatically to things that we were doing 10 years ago anyway. Mm -hmm. like we were doing things on the internet before MySpace, before YouTube, you know, doing viral videos and using the internet to... We were forced to do that. Yeah, because... And it ended up, that stuff ended up destroying those things that wouldn't accept us in the first place. Exactly, like the dinosaur. <laughs> so, we really, we're not the type of people that kind of take a foot plant and look back and see what's happened. Like, people have been talking about how long we've been together and stuff. And we we just, oh, we're always running forward. Yeah, like, we don't, we don't really... Little wolves pack. We, yeah. You know, like, looking behind yeah. us, just like, get to the next meal. Uh, we're still doing what we want to do and enjoying mm -hmm. doing so until... Uh, That's a nice feeling, though. Yeah. Uh, you guys are a Christian band according to iTunes. It is true. I know, is it Christian or religious? Or religious. Religious, religious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was, there was a big hubbub around that. We just started to sort of put it up on there because we were like, well, what defines religion? Like, why, you know, we have a lot of obsessive fans and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a very hardcore following, so why isn't, and we, you know, we give them something to look forward to and everybody can write their reviews. Yeah. And I was like, why is all the reviews like one star? And I started reading the reviews and all the reviews oh, were, no. How dare this be under listed under Christian? Because there'd be all these Christian people, and obviously people who are religious are very dogmatic. So instead of going and finding music, they just look under the category and go, oh, this looks interesting. And there yeah, was like was a video game. There was like a cross, a video game cross on the front of the cover of the record. So it's like, oh, what is this? And then they were, you know, everything's like, fuck you, son of a bitch, look at this. And they're like, oh my god. And then my favorite though, my absolute favorite, hands down review from a Christian, which is like, was, are the people at Apple retards that they would put this under <laughs> Christian and under religious and I'm like wait a minute you're Christian it's, people it's not, very Christian, well, it's not very Christian you to make fun of retards okay. because people can't categorize us so they, they try to categorize us under metal. anything like yeah. they'll be like they're from the funk metal or the my favorite is the formula which is this band meets this band on, on, on this drug on in this location like oh it's like public enemy meets Cindy Lauper smoking crack uh, Narnia. <laughs> when we first started doing this, record labels, were, it was like the birth of MP3, and mm -hmm. you know, record labels were kind of freaking out, and you know. We initially started out, you know, on a major label, and we, we sort of got out of there pretty quickly, um, you know, with our dignity hopefully intact. It's very interesting to hear you guys talk about it like that. Uh, everywhere else, every print interview, every other interview, you guys typically seem to undercut yourselves and try to take a lot of the seriousness and impact off of uh, off of the uh, off the art you create. Up until recently, I think uh, people who in the press didn't ask the right questions, they didn't do any research, they had they had no real good knowledge, and they were like, oh, so me and my myself adults, what does that mean? Where, how'd you guys meet? And it's like, go fuck yourself, I'm not gonna answer that question 20 times. Yeah. But now people are asking very good questions, such as yourself, and, and, oh, or, or, and or have already done, have already done <laughs> the research on the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you don't need to know my name, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's like, you, you have a deeper question, and so I'm willing to give you a, a, you know, a, a real answer. Mark David Chapman definitely made me kind of sit up and like, whoa, hold, hold on a second, what's going on? And listen again, and look at the lyrics, and listen again, and have to really think about that. So uh, that's definitely a testament to, uh, there's layers to it. There's, there's a message behind. You know, when we started, everything was very new metal, and everybody was like that. And then I think because the landscape became, you know, 
very different, and I think you know a lot of record companies suffered, and the music business suffered. Uh, that nobody now is taking any chances, and they're giving the worst deals to every every band. So they just sign things that are absolutely no-brainers, so, and and so out every song, and especially rock music, is like, look, if you're going to be Christina Aguilera, we know where you're coming from, and at least someone's writing some cool tracks for you, and maybe your video is cool, and it all makes sense. But you're not hiding behind. You're a pop act. You're not hiding behind a, a thing where it's not prefabricated. Rock and roll is prefabricated. All these emo screamo bands are prefabricated. They're thinking about what the next single is. They're thinking about the angle of the video. They're thinking about every freaking haircut. These people understand my stupid haircut and my black clothing. But the fact that they push rock and roll as if it's not prefabricated is really what just makes me want to fucking punch them all. And, and the sad part is people probably won't even get the real no, thing you're trying to say. They could be like, you don't like John Lennon. Yeah. It's saying, it's like, why would you shoot someone like John Lennon who probably would still be doing cool stuff mm -hmm. now? If it had to be one of the two, I would have rather seen McCartney go to Lennon. Oh. Oh, Lennon, Lennon was a visionary. He was prolific. He had a message. He was positive. McCartney. I'm amazed that you would want Paul McCartney shot tonight. You know, and hopefully our audience as well. And press and other people listening to it are intelligent enough to realize that the song Mark David Chapman is not about, yes, we're glad that Lennon is dead, or oh, oh, that. I, thought that was a, I thought that was a statement. No, no, we're, like, we're like, all saying that we're glad that he's dead. We're not no. saying go kill anybody. We're, yeah. we're just saying think for yourselves and yeah. move on. Yeah, I mean, what we're trying to say is we're using it as like, yeah, like a metaphor. It is you know? totally a metaphor. There, yeah. Listen, there are too many bands and not enough people to stop them. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's got to be like an ice age because this, yeah. this decrepit old fucking rock thing has got to go. Ah, we're mindless self indulgence. And you are watching Greatness TV. ¿Dónde está todo el dinero que me debes, ladrón?